Working for the federal government comes with some great benefits. Let's get right into it. First is work-life balance. And it's not just about having a consistent and reliable schedule. A lot of government jobs come with remote work. And if it's not remote work, they have telework built into it, which means that you can be at home and work from the comfort of your bed or your couch or your dining room table. And you could do that three, four days out of the week, meaning you only have to show up to an office on site maybe once or twice a week. So this is an amazing opportunity, right? Because think about what you could do all the time that you're saving. Next is the pension. A lot of people either do not know about this or they downplay it. Here's the bottom line. This is money for the rest of your life. It's not linked to the stock market. It doesn't matter what the Dow or the S&P 500 is doing. This is guaranteed money. And most private companies, they cannot offer you a pension today. They will match you on a 401k, but they will not guarantee you money for the rest of your life. And it makes sense because a lot of them would probably go bankrupt if they tried to do that. Now, looking at it today, the S&P 500, only a small sliver of companies offer their employees pensions. So we don't know how long this type of benefit is going to last. It could disappear in the future, but you should try to take advantage of it today. What's even better is this benefit is locked in after just five years of service. You only have to work for a federal agency for five years. So how much could your pension actually be worth? Let's do a calculation looking at a couple of examples. First, if you retire after five years as a GS-12 in Washington, D.C., we take $98,000 a year times five years times 1% to get $4,900. $4,900 divided by 12 is an extra 400 bucks a month. Now, this isn't life-changing money, right? $400 a month. But if you were to live to be 83, this would be over $100,000 extra that you would have in your pocket. Let's do another example. If you retire after 25 years as a GS-14 in DC, we take 151,000 times 25 years times 1.1% and that equals $41,000. Take that amount divided by 12, that leaves you with about $3,500 a month this is a lot better than the last example because you're actually putting forth a considerable amount of time. You're working 25 years. Now, this money would also, this doesn't include Social Security. So you would still add the amount from Social Security and that would be your total pension around 62 or whenever you decided to take it. Also, if you happen to serve time in the military, you can buy back that time in order to increase your federal pension. So don't think just because you had four, five, six years in the military that that time is wasted. You can still use that. And that's one of the main incentives a lot of people have when they come into the federal government. And when we're talking about the pension, I believe this is one of the best benefits that the government offers to its workers. And if you're interested in attaining federal employment and would like some assistance, check out the course link in the description below. Next is the time off. This includes 11 federal holidays that are paid time off. And in addition to these 11 days, we have days like December 24th, right? Christmas Eve. A lot of federal agencies, they will give you Christmas Eve off. So in reality, that would be 12 days. And then we have 59 minute rule where say on a Friday or on a Thursday, your executive or your secretary of the federal agency, they can grant all the employees 59 extra minutes. So that means you're leaving work an hour earlier. In addition to the federal holidays and the 59 minute rule, you also have your, your standard pay time off. And most government employees, they receive about 20 to 26 days a year off. And then on top of that, we have sick days. So every year, every federal employee will receive 13 days where it doesn't matter if you're sick, you're the one sick, or it could be your family members, or you might have to take someone to a medical appointment. All of that's covered and you can use it with your sick days. And then some federal agencies will give their workers time off for voting or they'll give them time off for volunteering. Overall, your standard regular federal government employee will have over a month off each year. The next benefit is the TSP. This stands for the Thrift Savings Plan. It's very similar to a 401k and the government offers matching. So you put money in and then every month the government will match you, right? And it goes up to about 5%. And with this, for most employees, the, the answer is to stick with the C&S fund, which basically matches the S&P 500. So you're earning a pension, you're earning Social Security, and then you're also earning your TSP, which is being matched with additional money. Money that would not normally be included in your salary, 
they are giving to you in order to grow even more of a retirement. The next benefit is advancement opportunities. There are thousands of government jobs that are considered ladder positions where you can start off at a GS9. And in that job position, it's built in the promotion from 9 to 11 to 12 to 13. You can climb all the way up depending on what type of position you're in. So you really need to consider when you're applying for jobs, which ones are ladder positions and which ones are not. Because if it's not a ladder position, then every 12 months, if you want a promotion, you're gonna to have to apply outside of your office. But even with a ladder position, you need to have that conversation with your supervisor. What are the expectations that you need to meet in order to attain that promotion? Otherwise, there's no guarantee that you will attain it. Also, there are hundreds, if not thousands of government jobs all over the world. Almost on every continent, you have government jobs. And with a lot of them, talking about Europe, for example, you have LQA, which is living quarter allowance, which is extra money the government provides its employees in order to be able to afford an apartment or a house in that foreign area. The next benefit is lower insurance rates. Insurance is a large expense, and thankfully, as a government employee, your insurance rates should be a lot lower compared to a regular private sector job. The agency will normally pay between 70-75% of the premium of the insurance plan that you pick. So if you're currently in a job that doesn't have insurance or you're paying too much out of pocket for insurance, this could be another benefit to incentivize somebody to actually apply and start working for a government job. In my experience, I spent 20 years in the army. After that, for the last four years or so, I've been in a government job. I feel like the benefits, the salary, everything that the government job offers its employees, it's competitive. It's not gonna be as great as some of those tech companies, right? So if you're looking at Google, Facebook, or Meta, or whatever it is, if you're using that as a comparison, the private sector at that level will probably always be more competitive than the federal government. But if you're looking at a lot of these other type of jobs, if you're looking at retail or some of these banking jobs, a lot of them, they barely are able to match the national average salary. They can barely touch 56, $57,000 a year. So. Compared to those type of jobs, uh, the government's gonna be a great option. If your minimum wage right now, if you're earning $15 an hour or less, which is one out of every three Americans, if you fall under that category, then absolutely. You should definitely look at this as a potential opportunity. The main thing that really stops a lot of young people and a lot of seasoned professionals from applying to a government job is the whole process seems ambiguous. It seems confusing. And it doesn't really have to be that way. There are eight main steps that you need to take on your journey to getting a federal government job. And if you wanna know what those are, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.